from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to Inspirational Perspective with Linnell Harris. Good morning, Chicago. You're listening to Inspirational Perspective. I'm your host, Linnell Harris, your very own life coach right here on WVON 1690 AM. Inspirational Perspective on your radio is all about murdering mediocrity and living the best life possible so as i ask you every sunday morning are you living the best life possible and this is the place to be to explore that possibility i'm excited about today's guest and today's topic because we're going to be discussing fitness family and finance i'm doing all that with our very own matt sapala money smart guy in the studio good morning sir Good morning, Linnell. Good to be here, man. Man. Marathon today, huh? Marathon. How about that? You ever run a marathon? Bro, earlier this year, we, uh, for, for veterans, we marched 20 miles. Man, I haven't done 20 miles in 20 years. Man, <laughs> 20 miles. That's a feat. Speaking of marathon, the guy, I think just yesterday, the, mm-hmm. Ke- the Kenyan marathon runner. Oh, did you see that? It was a marathon under two hours. And then did you see him afterward? The energy? Yeah, just, just. He's yeah, like, just he, was, he was like breathing normal. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'd have been like, (laughs) (laughs) cramp it up. Ice me. Well, if you're a marathon runner this morning, you know, do your best. Yeah. Ultimately. But that was amazing. That's right. Don't compare, compete. And I think it goes to show what we as human beings are capable of when we put our minds to it. And one of the things we're going to be talking about today is the combination of how do we stay healthy? How do we uphold the responsibility that we have to our families, to our wives, to our children? And how can we do all of that while we maintain financial well-being and build wealth? What a, what a topic this morning, man. I know. And a lot of people, I think, would, you know, they would put a lot of those things into opposing. I mean, they would have them competing priorities, right? Well, if I'm going to make money, I can't be healthy. Mm, mm. You know, I don't have time for the gym. Mm. Got to take care of my family. I mean, that's the reality for a lot of people. And they, I mean, that's their story, right? That it's a competing. So one of the things we're going to be talking about today is how you do it. Because so I'm open book, man. Open you, book. You, you do it all. And not only are you doing it all, but you tell me if I'm wrong, but you're being successful. So where I want to start is with fitness. Because right now, see, you got, you got a, you know, a couple of things happen. Yeah. Like couple, you know, finally you, got my, finally got my hand worked on, man. Yeah. And so you're recovering from that. I see you going to the gym. Yeah. Quite a bit. You got, you got a new look. <laughs> so, so one of my friends says, "Man, last year you were fit. This year you're starting. You're starting to put yourself together." What, what's shows. the difference between being fit and putting yourself together? What um, you say that is. You know, for me, uh, fit. You know, you got your cardio on. You, you, your, mm-hmm. your 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 energy's high. Uh, but I think putting yourself together and, and the mental image I thought I thought that I had going on in my mind mm-hmm. that I lo- thought I looked like wasn't the images that, that actually is portraying. Ah. So I think putting yourself together from a physical standpoint right. is different than just simply being fit. Yeah, Got it. Got it. And it's, and it's what I'm hearing from you is putting yourself together is actually creating the body and creating the fitness level that you want to have, right. like that you want to see in the mirror that makes you feel good. Got it. And are you applying some of the – because one of the things I hear, you know, I play basketball a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And one of the guys I play with, you know, something happened on the court. He was like, hey, man, people play how they live. And I was like, whoa, you know, yeah. and he kind of looked at me yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. get that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I was kind of like, OK, you know. So in terms of this leveling up in your fitness, yeah. tell us how you apply that to your way of living. You know, I'm in the insurance industry. Right. right. And guys always go golfing. I'm not a golfer, man. And even the guys on a golf course say. I judge my way of doing business with you by the way you play the game of golf. Because it's a patience game. Three hours, right. four hours you're on the golf course. For me individually, I just don't I just don't have time. I don't have three hours. That's just the market I go after isn't in that. In that in arena. That, yeah, no, gotcha. no. Yeah. But they are playing basketball. But they are in the gym. That's mm-hmm. where my market that I target hangs out and I need to identify with. As I apply fitness to my life, it's like, okay, are you happy where you're at? Mm. And so I started doing yearly executive physical. Ah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 46 at the end of this month. At this age, for example, my, my grandfather on my mom's side passed away when he was 42, 43 years old mm. uh, from, from uh, cancer. And so I have to stay on top of those type of things. And I've got five kids you know, yeah, from 24 years old to brand new one at seven months old. By the time he's graduating high school, I'll be 63. Isn't that something to think about? <laughs> I mean, that's two decades away. You're 61 going to a high school graduation. Exactly. Right. And yeah. guess what? I, if I have to stand the whole time, I want to be able to stand. Mm, bam. Right? Yep. 100%. Yeah, if he says after this, Dad, let's shoot some hoops, I want to be able to go shoot some hoops yeah. and still give him some problems. <laughs> <laughs> so 
part of I know for me, part of my commitment to my well-being and my health has been who I intend to be in the future. Right, exactly. Uh, is that kind of how what you think about? Hundred yeah. percent. It's one thing to be where you're at right now and mm-hmm. live the life you're living, but you want to make sure you not only maintain but you exceed that. Okay. Because we're talking about planning out our physical fitness, yeah. but then on top of that, I know both of you, both of us, are planning out our wealth as well. Right. Because, again, if I'm 61 years old and I'm able to give my son some problems on the court, Mm -hmm. that means I still want to move around a little bit. I still want to do some things. I want to enjoy my life. And part of that is how I plan financially over a long period of time. And unfortunately, many of us are thinking about today, which is why we're not taking care of our health and why we're not taking care of our money. Correct. I'm curious about this. So you're a busy guy. How do you fit in the gym? How do you fit this in? It's got to be an appointment, just like any other appointment. It's got to be a priority. As you elevate in finances, as you elevate your family, you know, time becomes a very precious commodity. You know, I'm not wrapped up in the latest TV drama. If I do watch TV, it's Netflix. I'm watching an inspirational documentary about something. I just got no fluff time. I'm not so hip on pop culture. I'll be, I'll be quite frank. People talking about these these little conferences, whatever the case may be, and I don't know what that is because I'm not about you know pop culture. I am about my family culture, about my financial culture, about my fitness culture. That's the culture I'm about. And I think once you start making a decision and you align mm. your priorities to that, those decisions are a lot easier to follow. And then you make that a reality. So what I'm hearing from you is that what is important in your life is what you're creating. Yeah. And the game that you're playing is is what you're creating. And what you're concerned about is what you're creating with family, with fitness, with money, with wealth. How are you going to take care of them? How are you going to take care of yourself? And so as a result of that, what you're feeding yourself with is based on what you're creating. So when somebody comes up to you about something else, you're kind of like, I haven't fed myself that lately. What's that taste like? Right, right. <laughs> like, mm, excuses? <laughs> so bitter. <laughs> got it. Let me sit that right back out. I got reasons over excuses. So let's go back to the appointment thing. Okay. Because I know for me, so my gym time typically starts at, I, I get up at 4.50 in the morning. Yeah. There's some nights, you know, maybe I didn't get eight hours. Yeah. I know there's times when you're tired. What is this conversation that's going on in your head when you're still headed in to the gym to take care of yourself? Yeah, that's why it's also important. For, for me, I hire a trainer. I, I got. I got to get uh, accountability. I got. Yeah, I got to get somebody. You know, Milton at the UFC gym out mm-hmm. in uh, Lombard, York Town Mall. I find him a person in my corner, constantly reminding me of my goals. Matter of fact, when I'm you know feeling tired, he's reminding me of my legacy. Uh, hey, yeah, I thought you're here to build a legacy. Ah, uh, right here. I thought you're a devil dog. I thought you were a marine. Marines like get that. tired. Yeah, what, what? Marines quit. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. Is, right. You, you weren't going to make excuses before. You're going to start today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's reminding me of those things in time, so I can constantly push. My limbs, because I tell them this is this is what I'm after. Remind me of that when I'm when I'm when you see me facing a limitation, I'm slowing down. Love that. So there's a level of accountability. I I know that for most people, when it comes to health and fitness, this is it's tough. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing is one, it's an appointment. Hundred percent. It's the most one of the most important appointments. So what I'm hearing also is a commitment. Right. Number two, accountability. There's a certain level of accountability that's also pulling you. So not only have you set up a structure in terms of scheduling it, but you've also set up a structure in terms of accountability of someone who's actually expecting it. That's right. And that's been the magic for you. It could be as simple as just having an app on your mm-hmm. phone. Like you give me mm-hmm. that, that water app. Yeah. That yeah. kept me accountable to drink a, drink a water. Right here, boom. Because we're always looking at our phone. Mm-hmm. So I might as well make sure this phone keeps me functional and the things I want to do structures i remove all the distractions and keep the things that, that keep me accountable notifications are great if it's the right things not distractions right right because either you're competing or you're distracted i choose to compete i love that so what i'm hearing from that matt is that you've even structured your technology uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> to complement the life you want to live so yeah. instead of pop culture notifications coming up mm-hmm. there's a water reminder hey hydrate yourself that's right I think that's important because how can you pour into other people unless you're taking care of yourself? And what I'm really trying to get to is that successful leaders, they're thinking differently from most. My way of processing it was saying it doesn't make sense to gain wealth that later in your life you got to spend your wealth to regain your health. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. What if you were able to maintain health while you built money so that way when you have the money, if you're spending it, you're spending it going to Hawaii. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Hanging out versus in the hospital. Two different H's there. Yeah, and the, and the tie-in for me, too, as well, is that a lot of the people I do business with also go to the gym. So I turn strangers into friends. There you go. Friends into potential customers. Love it. Likewise. And they see me. I mean, you earlier made a comment that mm-hmm. you do business the way you play. 
That's right. So if they see me play hard, they know I'm going after my business hard and keeping their, their business relationship hard. So let's talk about family. Okay. It's all four. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, this is, I mean, this is the core, and I think, it's, it, I think yeah. it's appropriate that we put this right smack dab in the middle of the show. When I think about family, you're a family man. You share. You have five children. Mm-hmm. The first question I have is you're in business with your wife. Yes. For a lot of people, that could be difficult, being in business with their wife. My wife and I, we're both entrepreneurs, but we're not necessarily in business together. Now, right. there are elements of business that we do together, but the main core businesses that we run, You know, we run those apart, and then the cool thing is we consult, right? So it's like I get her expertise, she gets my expertise. I I won't hire a consultant or hire someone without her interviewing them. Yeah, because you guys are getting a lot of knowledge in your own own verticals. Oh, yeah. And then you guys can bring that back together. But you all work together. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you and Sheena have done to make that work? Because here's the other reality. Marriage is marriage. Sure. Human being, male and female. <laughs> yeah. yeah. X and so chromosome. there are days that you're madly in love. And then there's other days that, you know, you're like, there she goes. Step uh, off, step off. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. So just share a little bit with us about that dynamic. Uh, you know, I think conflict and arguments are healthy. You know? I, How I, about I, that? Yeah, I think they are. I mean, if things were just, you know, in other words, we're both voicing our mm-hmm. opinion and we happen to be both, you know, eight type personality. She's a lot more organized and structured than I am. And on my end, I'm a lot more creative uh, on my end. So mm-hmm. through the process of building a business together, we are able to find our individual strengths. Mm. And then we also have a mentor ah. that pulls us up to as well. So just like I have an accountability partner right. in the gym, we got an accountability partner in business. So that kind of helps level things out at oh, times? Oh, big time. And sometimes we ask questions to our mentor because, you know, sometimes we may not listen to each other, but we'll listen to our mentor. Ah. <laughs> So then there's an objective third. What I'm hearing is there's an objective third party that both of you all respect. Yes. That when you're doing business and there's some type of business agreement, you can take that somewhere else. And then at that point, it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing you're not like, yeah, see, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and sometimes, you know, and, and I've, I've learned. For example, we got into arguing yesterday. Okay. I, I, she, she says, babe, you, you kind of snapped, you snapped, at, you snapped at me. I, I, I didn't snap at you. No, 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 you snapped at me. Okay, forget how I'm feeling. You felt like I snapped at you? She mm-hmm. says, yeah, well, babe, I don't think I did, but listen, if you thought I snapped at you, I apologize. I'm sorry. F- four or five years ago, that wasn't mad. I had to prove myself right. Uh-huh. I'm the man. Right, you know, I'm, right, I'm right, not, right, right. I'm not wrong. I'm right. Okay. Versus, you know what? If I'm serving my queen, if she felt, regardless if I felt a certain way, if she felt it, mm-hmm. then that's important. Got it. Regardless of how I feel. That's, and, and let me tell you, that's probably the toughest thing <laughs> in marriage. Uh, I love that because what I heard is that you were actually acknowledging the feeling and then apologizing for the impact Mm -hmm. that your actions had on her that created the feeling. Right, because we naturally want to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a natural thing for us physically, emotionally, mentally. Mm -hmm. Things that there's there's things that she's probably grown up with. I'll probably never know about, which makes Mm -hmm. her the person that she is today. Yeah. And I have to honor and respect that, and vice versa. And there's certain things that I that I need Mm -hmm. as a man. To, to feel loved and respected, that uh, I need to remind her, hey, hey, babe, listen, in this situation, would you consider doing this? Makes a lot of sense. So I'm curious about how your marriage has and how it's evolved with the business. Um, and the reason I'm asking this question is because I know for Pam and I, yeah. the first two years were tough. So I'm, I'm curious, like, how have you all evolved and what advice would you give to young couples who are looking to build I mean, they're listening, they're watching, and they're looking to build their business together. Or maybe they're they have two separate businesses and they're looking to build. What are some of the things that you and Sheena do? Like the let's call it the ingredients or maybe the components that you all use to stabilize your relationship. If this is the person that you're going to date, Mm -hmm. for me, my situation was I'm a single dad. Mm -hmm. I had three kids. Sheena was a single mom. She had one kid. So we're a blended family. Blended. Okay. And so for 12 years, I, I dated my business. I wasn't dating anybody. So I lived for 12 years, didn't really date, mm-hmm. right? So I was just dating the business. I was involved in the business. I was loving on the business, right? And then now we get married. Now I got to love on my wife. Uh. I got to feel like I got to remove my priorities and put it there. And you talk about evolution. Because we're married and because we're in business together and we see each other literally every day, mm-hmm. I think we have about 20 years of arguments already under our belt. <laughs> so there's growth. Huge. Hyperspeed. Yeah. Hyperspeed. I mean, I, I think people yeah. forget that, I, don't, I mean, everybody married that's listening, when you say argue, they're like, yeah, 
And I, I think sometimes there are people who are single yeah. who are out here that follow you and Sheena, and they see, they see the, the bright lights and the stars, and you guys are smiling and hugging. And it's like, yeah, babe. They're like, they argue? Oh, yeah. yeah this is like, real. Like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So you argue, and, you're, and what I love about that is you're like, it's grown your relationship hyper speed. And so it's almost like you've been together 20 years because you've been able to cover so much ground. Right. Because you're confronting one another. Yeah. Would you say that confronting one another is one of the elements that has solidified and strengthened your relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, managing conflict mm. and processing issues quickly. Because if you don't process issues and manage a conflict quickly, you'll, it'll ruin your day. And if you're in business, it'll, it'll throw off your sales calls. It'll throw off your presentations. It'll throw off your boardroom conversations. You'll loathe the business because mm. you loathe her. Right. And you're in business together. You're in business together. Yeah. And, right. And, and people, and then your team, because you're both leaders in the business. Right. Then your team can feel the energy, right? Uh huh. Matt walks into the room. Sheena doesn't look at him. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Something going on. <laughs> <laughs> and the immature entrepreneur will try to share their problems with their staff, with mm. their team, and try mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. recruit them in their corner right. to pit them against the other right. partner. Right. Right, that that that, that, make no, that makes no sense. Now you create drama in the office. People are like, I already got my own drama. I don't need your drama. Now I got to deal with your yeah, drama. Yeah, forget this. Right. It's, that's not fair to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Our game is if if I'm serving you, mm-hmm. right. If I if I'm your employer or if I'm coaching and mentoring you, then I need to bring you up to the next level. I don't need to make my job harder mm-hmm. by sprinkling my own crap in your lawn. I love that. So one of the structures is communication. Yeah. Let's just take that right. So yeah. hardcore communication, mm-hmm. whether it's loving, whether it's confrontational with love. And you don't need to be right all the time. Right? Say so that again. You don't need to be right all the time. <laughs> because, I, th- yeah. I mean, yeah. as a coach, one of the things I work with on my clients and one of the things we've talked about on the show is the cognitive distortions that many of us have. Good word. I mean, cognitive distortion, mental illusions. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, we we look at the world through this lens that's not really real. Yeah. And one of those one of those lenses is if I'm not right, I'm losing, and that's an illusion that will wreck your life. Mm-hmm. It will wreck your relationship, and it will wreck your business. Mm-hmm. And what I hear you saying is, look, man, I'm willing to take that lens off and actually look yeah. objectively at what's going on. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And that's usually anchored and sourced with pride and ego. And sometimes pride gets in our way. I mean, you want to take pride in your work. You mm-hmm. want to be prideful about who you are, what your brand you represent, and the last name that you have. But when, when pride and ego comes to be negative and toxic and, and it just becomes selfish, mm-hmm. then that's when you know, you know it's, it's not pulling you in the right direction. Got it. So based on communication... What does you all like? You all have a cadence for meeting. For me, I, I have a couple of rules uh, when I sit down with, with, with folks. So the only reason I'm going to ever pick up the phone is if I see my wife call back twice. So you actually tell them? Yeah, up front. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. And my, or my kids are calling me and they call back twice. Mm-hmm. And then my mentor. So if any of those calls come up and it'd be a quick glance. Because I don't want to take attention off the client. Because I don't want them snapping the end. Because there's always energy. When but it's beautiful because you've already set the tone. Yeah. So they know if you pick up the phone, Matt's handling an emergency. With his family, with the most important people in his mm-hmm. life. You got to manage the expectations up front. As I got to know my wife, I needed to share with her some of the things of my past that probably I wasn't happy with because that's me, mm-hmm. right? And so, hey, baby, this is a couple of things that you need to know about me. Da, 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 da. I don't want, because of the social media world that it is today, I don't want somebody putting a post up from 20 years ago mm-hmm. that before social media was even created, somebody scanned an old picture from from the whatever, and, and, and she may not like. Right, the visual, the visual, right, and yeah. so I, 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 this is my life. Please don't judge me. Please judge me from the day I met you and how I treated you because you changed my life. That's huge, right? So, so just know this. So, managing expectations up front with not only your your life partner, your, your children, but also your business. The best way to to go process conflict is to let people know the stuff up front and asking the tough questions, letting people know the tough questions up front. How do you feel about marriage? How do you feel about kids? How do you feel about the D word? Mm. I've, like I've never mentioned the D word. You know, what I'm talking about in terms of marriage. Oh, I don't, yeah, even, I don't I do. even mention right now. I'm on the radio because yeah. I don't think that word has any place in my life. It doesn't. I want. I don't want. I don't want to give it one ounce of life. Yeah, the D word. I love that because what I'm hearing is commitment. Yeah. Like I'm in. One of the things I hear is that with your wife, the most important person in your life, you've managed the expectation. Like no matter what happens, mm-hmm. I'm here. Right. We right. we together. Right. Right. That's funny. We are talking about commitment to our physical mm-hmm. and our health. Yep. And how we also have a commitment to our family. Kind of similar, huh? It's, it's, yeah. yeah. And that's interesting. Yeah. You you share. I mean, quality. Yeah. 
I, what I'm catching from this conversation is that you as a leader, you've made some hardcore commitments. Got to be hardcore. And they're commitments that you're not willing to breach. Non-negotiables. Would you say that has a huge deal to do with your success? 100%. These are certain non-negotiables in my life. There's no negotiation. So what would you say to the person that's constantly negotiating? It's like uh, being on a boat without a rudder. Mm. And the, the storm's catching you, you know, sloshing you left and right. And by the way, a lot of life is dealing with the storms. There's a lot more storms in life than there are sunny days. And if you, have, if you don't have your anchors down, mm. you're going to be knocked left and right. Wow. So, I mean, what I'm taking away from this first part is that you're a committed man. You've dropped anchors in, in certain areas of your life. Mm -hmm. And you've used those anchors to stabilize you. And to stabilize your relationship. But what anchor has Matt Sapala dropped in finance? I got a couple of fun questions, though. Sure. As we kind of close out the hour. First, what do you want to say to your wife? I'm sure she's listening. What do you, what do you want to say to your wife right Good now? Good morning, baby. Uh, listen, I love the mother that you are, the wife that you are, the partner that you are. And uh, I'm fighting every day to create a better life for us. Man, I feel like I got to say something to Pam now. Come on. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you know I love you. Pam knows I love her. And you should see the smile he has on his face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure she's watching. <laughs> here's, the, here's the other fun question. What's next, man? I mean, I, I mean, in terms of fitness and marriage, what's yeah, your vision I mean, for the next year? See, the vision next year from uh, from the health standpoint or the, uh, the this health you, and marriage, this, health and marriage. Yeah. There's uh, certain places in the world that my wife wants to go to. We're going to make time for, for, for that. Nice. Um, there's certain things that we're doing in business. So what I like, I can incorporate everything. Everybody's looking for this. Work-life balance. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm at integration and harmony. Mm. You know, we're all combining these things together. So our business life is connected with our family. Our family life connected with our, with our faith life. Our faith life is connected with our, our, our fitness life. I'm hearing integration in everything you talk about. And, and one yeah. of the things I talk about with my clients all the time is competing priorities. Like, hey, you're mentally creating competing priorities. What if you made it an integration? What if you integrate? And what I'm hearing is part of your success, Matt is that you've been able to integrate. So yeah. you're integrating fitness. You're integrating marriage. You're integrating business. I mean, so much so that you do business with your wife. I mean, you guys are leading a business together. Yeah. And so what I just heard is the vision is to integrate some of her hopes and dreams into what you do over the next year. Oh, yeah. Love 100%. that. 100%. And, and In a tax-deductible way. And, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Tax deducted. We're going to talk a lot about that. Matt, how do people follow you? How do they find Very you? Very easy. Money Smart Guy on Insta, MoneySmartGuy.com, Money Smart Guy on Facebook, Money Smart Guy on Twitter, Money Smart Guy on LinkedIn, everywhere. Just Money Smart Guy. I'm Linnell Harris. All you got to do is find that. <laughs> Simple. What's your approach to your children? Just like I have a appointment in my calendar for my gym mm -hmm. and appointment in my calendar for my clients. There's an appointment in the calendar for the kids and they get all of me in that moment. So I'm not consumed by business conversations during my time with, time with, time with the kids. Got it. And it's funny too, is because the kids, you know, in transit, uh, I'll make calls in the, in the car and now with Bluetooth in the car, you can mm -hmm. hear th throughout the speakers. It's funny. My kids pick up the language, mm. you know, like, uh, like Joe, he's nine years old. Hey, Poppy, uh, who's running a million point Bay shop. Mm. Who's running a million dollar agency. Where'd you, where'd you pick up this language, right? Well, yeah, he's listening. He's to listening. Me. Hey, hey, Poppy. Uh, so, so what does Poppy do? Uh, my Poppy uh, helps people with money and make money. Where'd you get that? I didn't teach you that. I didn't tell him that. Right. But he's just he's just he's just listening. He's just listening. He's putting two into, what do you think that's had? What, what what type of impact do you think that's having on his psyche? Well, number one, that the language of money is being deposited into him. Because when I was growing up, money was never discussed. And uh, matter of fact, if you brought it up, it was a bad, it was a bad subject to bring up. Uh, <laughs> first, let's get the idea out there that yeah. you grew up wealthy. I mean, let's get rid of that. Oh, I I'm broke. I grew up broke. You were making 40, 50, 60 grand. In my mind, you were a millionaire. So yeah. let's take this back to JoJo. Yeah. So here he is in the car, mm -hmm. listening to these type of conversations. Yeah. And so one of the things I'm getting is because he's spending time with his dad and He's in these conversations, and Jordan, as he grows, he'll yeah. be, I mean, he'll be learning this yeah. from the car seat on. How do you think they'll feel about money because of who you're being for them? They're going to know that money is a tool, mm. and it's just going to allow them to do greater things in their life. And it's not something that's just reserved for the wealthy. Wealthy Wealth, wealth starts beyond its manifestation in your checkbook or in your wallet, mm. right? Wealth is a man manifestation with already starting in your, your conscious spirit, your energy. Your, your money flow starts with your energy flow. Right. And so so he's going to learn how to master that energy to flow that money and manifest the best of him mm. out there. And finance and money just allows him to 
multiply that. And by the way, my, my other kids, in addition to Jojo, my 24-year-old, he can he can sell you anything. My, my son's a salesman. Got it. I love it. And by the way, salesman is a good thing. Yeah. Every, everybody that is influential in your life is it's selling sales, you something. Selling you something. Yeah. My twins, the 18-year-old girls, they know, they know, they know the hustle. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when they, they wrote me a, a birthday card last year, they wrote something here. Poppy, thank you for always giving us what you had with whatever you had. Because that was my conversation with them. Listen, girls, when, I, when you were being raised, I wasn't as financially successful as I am today. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know, I gave you what I had when I had it. Got the it. best I had. The youngest was born. Jordan was born. Okay, you meet your brother. You meet your brother. Okay, downstairs. We're at Northwestern Hospital. Okay, meet me downstairs. Ruben, Milani, Soledad, you three, listen to me. I don't want you being upset, managing expectations up front. I don't want you being upset or envious. Mm-hmm. Of your brother, because when he was born in a different financial position, I was when you were his yeah. age. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want you being envious and jealous of him. But by the way, if you play your cards right, I'm not the type of dad that I'm going to wait till I die for you to live your inheritance, for you to get your inheritance. Mm-hmm. I want you to get your inheritance while you're alive. So I just had a conversation with my son about a month ago mm-hmm. about the snowplow business he's going to start this this winter. Mm-hmm. So he needs to get that rolling. I'm going to invest in your business with a truck. With a snowplow, but you got to you got to organize. You got to do the work. Yeah, you got to do the work. I'm an investor in your business. I'm just not going to give it to you because you don't get anything you get from me or anything you have in your life for free. You got to work yeah. for it. You got to earn it. So, what was your relationship like with your dad? Uh, it's funny. I can talk now, yeah. and, and she is listening to this. She'll, she's laughing right now. Okay, because she knows that the quietest room in the world is a room with my dad and I. Mm. No conversation. Why is that? Tough subject for me, bro. I, I, um. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Well, and, and here's let me let me tell you why I'm asking. Because as men, often we mimic what we see. Yeah. And I can ask the question with confidence, knowing and, and no fault to your dad because he likely didn't have the yeah. example that Correct. he needed. Because my dad did. And I know for me, I don't want to be like my dad when it comes to family. But you're creating something different. And I ask the question because sometimes I, I know as men, we'll create excuses and well, my father wasn't there, et cetera. And what I'm noticing is that you're creating the life that you want to live despite whatever yeah. you've experienced. And for our fathers, they didn't have a roadmap like we have now. They didn't live in the information age. They grew up in the industrial age. They right. went to work, brought home the check, dropped it on the table. I've done what I need to do. Get a beer, mm-hmm. watch some TV. Hey, kids, don't bother me too much. Go to bed early. Get up, do the same thing the next day. So I asked about that because who you're being for your children. And I don't know if there's any part of that that drives you. But if there is, I, I mean, if there's a message you want to give to a man or to a father, yeah, what message would that be? Regardless of your upbringing, you have the power and choice and control to create the reality that you want today. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I just wish my father had exposed me to a lot more when I was uh, younger and led me through conversation, through a lot of uh, life challenges as, as, as I was becoming a teenager and becoming a, a young man. I, just, I wish I had more dialogue. But here's what I appreciate about my father a lot. He did show me that work ethic. He did yeah. show me that I needed a, a provider, uh, yep. what, a, what that role should be like mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. one's life. Yep. He always said, no matter, don't wish me happy birthday, don't give me anything, but always take care of your mom. I so he did teach you something yeah. that you grabbed a hold of. Yeah. yeah. And I know, acknowledgement and approval from my father is something I haven't, exp- I, I, I don't remember last experience. I can't remember the last time my dad said I love you. Well, that's not something a baby boomer dad's going to say. No. And if there's a baby boomer dad listening, I think the message to them is that your children want to hear this. And, and I, I think there's an opportunity at any point for a man to make a powerful shift. I don't know what I would do if my dad told me, he said, I love you. I think I break, I'm, I'm tearing up right now thinking about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, you probably cry. Yeah. I mean, well, every human being wants some level of acknowledgement. Especially from their dad. Yeah. At least from, at least from my, me yeah. as a man. Yeah. There's something you're bringing to your children that you didn't get. What's the commitment you have to your children? It's funny. The conversation I have with them is everything I'm doing is for you. Yet they don't see it sometimes mm. until mm. life hits them. Ah. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, that's what it was for. Like one, one, yeah. time, one time my daughter said, Papi, when you tell me you're all about family, I don't believe it. Mm. And that's, why, baby, that's hurtful. Why, why do you say that? Mm. Because I, I don't see it. And I said, well, you don't see the Cancun trip. You don't see the trip to Bahamas. You don't see the trip to Hawaii. You don't see, mm-hmm. really, you don't see it? And to her, that wasn't important. Yeah. And so she was driven by quality time. Right. Her love language mm-hmm. was quality time and acknowledgement and affirmation. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I needed a key in on that. On that. On that. Right. Because all the kids have different personalities. And I'm recognizing it now on my fifth kid. I didn't recognize my first three. I love that you're saying that, too, because what I'm getting from this is the work ethic that you've created, these commitments that you dropped, that have created the financial wealth is actually allowing you to become a better father than a worse father. 100%. Got it. Uh, the best things in life aren't given to you for free. You know, uh, and if you want what you want, you gotta go get it. Go get it. Don't wait yeah. for somebody to give it to you. What would you say to your children right now if they're listening? You've got your life to live. You have to define what 
path you're going to follow. Be committed to that. Develop your unique skill set and whatever that unique passion or opportunity that you discover. And don't be a person that's hopping from this and this and that. Just stick stick with one thing. Master one thing. Make your money at it and uh, uh, learn how to develop and grow from there. Love it, man. Want to talk about money? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which. <laughs> so finances, right? I mean. And the last thing to my kids, I love you. I love you. And I love you. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you know, it's funny because I look at the relationship I have with my son to that point. Lots of hugs, lots right. of kisses, lots of I love you's. And I think like, man, I, I remember maybe the last time my dad kissed me. I had to be maybe eight or nine. That was the last time. And I'm thinking like, man, legend's going to feel my prickly face into his 20s and 30s and <laughs> yeah. 40s and 50s. I'm like, man, pop. Hey, boy, come here, right? Because that's my expression of love to him, right? It's interesting. And I, I think it's also evolution. We're learning more about who we are as human beings and kind of, I think, going back to who we originally should be. So thanks for that, man. Thanks for exhibiting what it looks like to be a loving dad. All right, so money. Let's just get right to it. You're a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Cash flow. What's that feel like? Well, it's, um, it's you know, it's, it's crazy to think that I was making 20 grand a year as a sergeant in the Marines. Mm. And the only way we made more money to make an extra 300 bucks extra a month was to deploy into a combat zone, right? Man. To make an extra put, 300 Put bucks. your life on yeah, the line. put your life on the line. Yeah. And so, you know, to, to manifest a million bucks. And the thing is, I mean, uh, you, you, you're fighting to get to the next level. I mm-hmm. realize right now I'm the brokest of all the millionaires. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> Isn't that seven, something? You start hanging around millionaires, you're only making seven figures? Bro, you just, come on. Isn't that something? Talk to me when you're making eight. Man, I, so <laughs> I remember when... I realized my net worth was a million. And I'm like, why didn't it, why didn't it feel like it? Yeah. Why didn't it feel like right. it? But then you begin to realize, like, there's a, I mean, completely, there is a feeling you have mm-hmm. where you're not worried about bills and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that's, you do have that feeling. Yeah. But then there's a whole nother level to wealth that yeah. you begin to get exposed to as you gain more wealth. Yeah, you know, speaking of feelings, now that you put in that category, I love knowing that my wife can go to any store, any restaurant without every worrying about Money. swiping the credit card. Yep. I love knowing that she can take care of her family, health care. Mm-hmm. Uh, JoJo, they wanted to put him on ADD, drugs, mm-hmm. uh, Ritalin or something like that. Right. And she refused. She took him to an alternative doctor, put virtual reality hood on him, but it cost 6000 bucks. I remember uh, Sheena's, uh, the doctor said, well, you know, it's, it's $6,000, but if you put a, you know, $1,000 down and you know, 500 bucks a month, we'll let you pay in payments. Isn't it funny how, how, how people talk to you? When, I mean, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I get because most people aren't fortunate like that. So the doctors, their language, I mean, I think they're programmed to be like, hey, here's how, how I can make it work for you. You're thinking like, bro, I'm about to write you a check. Yeah. Well, she said, she said, well, if I pay cash, is there a discount? <laughs> That's what I like. Can I get 15% off this if I pay it up front? Yeah, right. You're not chasing me around. So you're a millionaire. You've built a million, a, a million dollar business. My wife calls me cheap. Right. Yeah, yeah. And she she actually had concerns about the validity of my financial success. <laughs> <laughs> now I think she gets it. You know, she kind of yeah. understands in terms of how we've created investments for our long term financial success and, and, and wealth. But how do you look at money? I mean, do you just go spending? You still cut coupons or do you shop sales? I don't. I shop sales. I love coupons because I, a lot of coupons are electronic today. Mm-hmm. I like seeing prices on the Internet. They have a right line through that. And it's a cheaper price after that. Of course. I'll take that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, once you do, you, do you wait for sales? Like, do you, if there's something that you I want, do. how about I, that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, th- there's some things I'll, I'll, f- I'll flip on. Like, if there's a watch. I like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a watch guy. I'm a suit guy. Okay. I'm money smart. I'm, I made it, I made it call it frugal. I call it money smart. There you money go. Money smart guy. Yeah. So I'm going directly to the source because a lot of these guys go over there to, to, to get the suits made and then they resell it over mm-hmm. here. I'm just going direct. The guy found me on Instagram. Hey, I like your suits. He's from Thailand. So what, what I'm getting is, and, and, and the reason I asked you the question is because I think sometimes what I notice is that poor people's spend money frivolously. And so I was curious to ask you how you think about money in terms of spending, because in terms of the components of creating creating wealth, spending is a huge part of keeping you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm getting is that you spend money like most of the millionaires I know. The funny thing is, here's, here's our system. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damon John wrote a book called The Power of Broke. Mm. And it was the power of broke that got me here. Mm. And I can't, I can't forget that power. So here's how I make myself feel broke. As soon as the money comes in, all the bills are paid. So we, we give it in terms of tithing it. We give it. We, we, we put um, our money towards our taxes. We, we put our savings away. And after that, we clear out the bank account. Ah. Part of that bank account, I, I don't see. Mm. So when I log in, it's zero again. Now, I'm curious. I get that. Yeah. 
um, that's one of the ways to grow profit. It's a mm-hmm. psychological trick that Correct. you and Sheena are playing yep. on yourselves. Yep. I'm curious where the other money is going and what you're doing with that money. A lot of our money going towards our structured insurance-based retirement plan. So wait a second. You sell insurance and you actually yeah, yeah. purchase insurance? Well, I'm, in, I'm in the insurance industry. And here's here's a cool part. I got a backstage pass that goes on in the money business. And here's what I realized through the 20 years I've been doing it, that my money inside my insurance contracts never lost money when there's a downturn in the market. You know, so it's interesting because a lot of people are saying the recession is coming. It, yeah. How do you feel about that? I can't wait. Listen, rich people are positive, and they get positive results. Rich people are positive through negative situations, and they positively make it through, mm-hmm. and they become rich. But wealthy people anticipate. Uh, I'm in the anticipation. I'm anticipating the next recession because every time, this will be my third recession I've been through. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't prepared for the first one. It was 01 when I first was starting my business. Right. But 08, 09, I got, I got down. I was broken 01. It, it didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, this is a recession? Oh, okay. I thought that's how we live. <laughs> Yeah, and then nine eleven hit and, yeah. and further ex- put mm-hmm. an exclamation point on, on the recession. Oh eight oh nine, I was ready. That means I had cash stacked up. If you look at what the wealthy do, look at Apple. Look at what they're doing with their cash. They're stacking cash. Yeah, these banks when when, when the recession hits, the banks stop lending. Why? Because they got to restash cash. Stack cash. Yeah. Then during the recession, is that that's when I pick up opportunities mm-hmm. when people have been overspending. Mm-hmm. They bought the house they couldn't really afford. They bought the car they really couldn't <sighs> keep. And so that's when that's when remember that's when wealthy people get wealthier. Mm-hmm. Remember, they're, 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 they're in the recession, it's not that money disappeared. It just changed places. It just, yeah, it changed hands. Yeah. It changed hands for the people that was prepared to, to anticipate those opportunities. So even when I was making money, I was stacking cash. And thankfully, I stacked cash because I took advantage of a guy who was selling me a Bentley he couldn't afford, or made profits from that, and reinvested it into my core business, which is where I'm at today, because that's my Mississippi River of cash flow. Got and, it. And, and I'm not one of those so guys. So reinvested into your core business, so insurance. Yeah. In, in the insurance agency. So can you, insurance can you talk agency. about the type of insurance policies you have? So when I was an agent, the policies that made me the most money individually is what they called Index Universal Life. Mm-hmm. I individually own the multiple multiple policies of those. Yeah. They, they grow with the market, but mm-hmm. there's no downside risk. Right. So no, I have no loss. I have no loss. So in other words, I don't have any recovery recovery years. Yeah. So now, why year, is that important? Because let's say you lost twenty percent, mm-hmm. you need a thirty-two percent return mm-hmm. just to get mm-hmm. you back on track. And that's not that's assuming mm-hmm. that thirty-two percent comes next year. It takes years for people to recover what they lost in a, in one down year. If I'm in a strategy, financial strategy where I'm always ahead of the market, progressing ahead of the market, I'm, I don't have to waste any time having to get my money to get back up to where it used to be. Now, why is that important? So if I if I need to send my kids to school, if I need to invest in my kids' business, if mm-hmm. I need to invest in our business, I don't want my money to have to recover just to get back where I started because then I'm, I'm selling my shares or selling my position at a lower value of which right. I originally bought it. Right. What I'm hearing from this is part of the reason that why you invest this way is because it puts you in a position to always press play. Correct. You can always say, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, right. pull down cash, et cetera. And so now we've taken those strategies, and I taught real estate investors, homeowners, how to reposition their home equity inside these contracts. Because what, what, what do normal people try to do? to accelerate the payment of their house. They send additional mortgage payments, right? Right. right. But instead of sending it to the bank, you put it inside these insurance contracts because it's liquid, safe, earns a rate of return, and we withdraw it. There's no taxes or penalties. Then you can withdraw and just pay everything off. Correct. If you want to. Yeah. You and might not want to. You may not want to. Yeah. And the, the cool part about that, not wanting to, you're liquid. Uh, so you, you yeah, have your house yeah. paid for, it may not be paid off. There you go. Right? Yeah. And so it allows you. I got this money I can play with. That's now. right. Without asking the bank, can I get equity? Can I get my own equity? And what happens when people get laid off? The bank will let you get the home equity because you don't have a job. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So by putting it in an insurance policy that actually grows, it allows me to be liquid or a liquid side fund, mm-hmm. right? That's earning interest that you have access to. Got it. So we just we just like insurance contracts because it allows to grow tax free. It allows to be it can compound tax free, right? Everybody files four hundred one k. Where does four hundred one k come from? IRS code four hundred one chapter k. So they have a federal partnership. Mm-hmm. in their pocket for the rest of their life. But the little known secret is the insurance contract. And by the way, we're in Chicago. Check this out. The, the insurance industry are big real estate investors. Let me prove it to you. The biggest building in Chicago. What is it? Willis Tower. Correct. It's spelled Willis, but it's pronounced Sears. <laughs> <laughs> So what's Willis? It's an insurance company. Second one is Trump Building. That's real estate. Third biggest building in Chicago is John Hancock. Hancock, yeah. What is John Hancock? Oh, insurance. Insurance. Insurance, yeah. Uh, Aon Building, right next to Millennium Park. Big white building. Insurance. Insurance. CNA Building, red building. Insurance. Insurance. Uh, right across the diamond right here at Michigan Avenue, Prudential Building. What yeah. do they do? Health insurance. Yeah. 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 Insurance, yeah. So the biggest buildings in Chicago are owned by insurance companies. Mm. What does that tell you? They love investing in real estate. Yeah, they and do. and insurance is the play. Is what I'm what I'm what I'm getting from you in terms of financial. And if you're not an insurance game, what I'm hearing is that you want to 
be investing in some way in the insurance game. Because it's the financial foundation to any financial home. If stocks, bonds crumble, Bitcoin crumbles, 401k crumbles, you have financial foundation built up. See, life insurance does for people what most people don't think it does. It pays you while you're alive. Most people think that life insurance only pays you when you're in the ground. But life insurance today, just like our cell phones, upgrade as time goes on. Mm-hmm. People still, from a financial standpoint, are, are thinking like, uh, remember the old pagers? Yeah. If people think like a financial pager instead of thinking like a financial smartphone. And what's the difference? The big difference, well, the big difference with the financial smartphone is more features to insurance today. Ah, uh, yeah. Back back then, a financial pager had one function: mm-hmm. only when you die, yeah, when you expire, right? Right, right, yeah. Today, it pays you when you're alive. Because my website developer of June this year, at 38 years old, had a stroke. Wow. But the insurance contract paid him a living benefit. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the wife and the kids, their lives aren't disrupted. Now, this series that I'm doing is a leadership series for really for entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm really trying to. Pull Pour into entrepreneurs in a way I haven't in the past. And I believe that we're all entrepreneurs. Last week we had Ernest B. Fenton on, uh, in the studio. And one of the things he said is, you're all entrepreneurs. You just don't know it. <laughs> yeah. This series is for everyone. Now, as an entrepreneur, one of the first things I did, and you can mark this because I actually did this with you and your wife. Yeah. I came out and I said, got to get rid of the 401k. If I got, I was an executive in corporate America. Most people aren't. Mm-hmm. But if I had gotten really sick, my family would have been taken care of right. as an executive. But now I'm playing this game alone. First things I did is I took a substantial amount of my wealth and I put it in an index annuity. Part of the reason I did that is because I wanted to make sure the market couldn't take away my wealth. With my wife being your agent, did you yep. experience any down- downturn when China the trade tariff wars started. No, nothing. Zero. Zero losses. Huh? Nothing. As a matter of fact, part of the reason I did is because I was anticipating a downturn. And I'm like, I don't want to lose. Mm-hmm. I don't want to lose. Yeah. And so I made that move. Now, here's the other thing. My wife and I, we both have million dollar pilot life insurance policies. Mm-hmm. And the other people, we're both entrepreneurs. And so what you were saying is if one of us gets it, we don't have to worry. We, we live off one income. We live off mm-hmm. my income, mm-hmm. number one. And I think that's important for people to hear too because we run separate businesses, but we live off my income. Interesting. Good. You get that? Yeah, yeah, very good. You guys read between that? I hope you got you picked that up. Like we live off what I make. Smart, right? I pay the bills. Smart, right? So, but she also has insurance. So if one of us gets sick, nothing changes. Most entrepreneurs who are listening, I'm not sure they're in that place. So here's what I want you to do: that my mom is an agent and she writes these policies. So give my office a phone call. You can connect with my mother, whom I trust. Here's the thing: when it comes to money, I think that. There has to be a a high level of trust. So call my office, 312-899-6245, to learn more about what we're talking about. Because when you're talking about money, it's easy to get confused because emotions come in. And I I say this all the time. People will talk about sex before they talk about money. They'll talk about what happens in the darkness of their bedroom before they talk about what they have in their pocket and carry around all the time. And so the conversation that we're having is extremely important, especially for entrepreneurs, but not just for entrepreneurs, but for anyone who's out here working and their money matters to them, they need to be in a conversation around how they're protecting their money. Because what I heard is that you and Sheena are protecting your money. Mm -hmm. You're not just protecting it, but you're also investing it. Um, And so if you heard something you like, Give my office a phone call. Leave a voicemail, 312-899-6245. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect you with my mom, Meldra Harris, so she can come out, sit down with you, take a look at your financial situation, and from there, help you do what Matt and I are talking about. Because you don't have to be a millionaire to do this. No, I started with 50 bucks Yeah, when I was in the military. Whatever I can tuck away and put away. And uh, something that attorney Ernest B. Fitton said last week is he talked about patience. And he was like, a lot of us, we want to do it overnight. And he was like, it takes time, yeah. folks. And what I'm hearing from that is you started with 50 yeah. bucks yeah and I'm, i've been at this for 20 years 50 bucks my the first yeah. first insurance policy i bought i think cost me 38 dollars a month just, it was just to, me just right to get the ball rolling man and then i upgraded that was 200 dollars a month no, we're, talk, we're talking about family you know that the, the crazy thing about this stuff is mm-hmm. you buy a house yep you can't leave the title company with the keys without proof of what insurance home insur- homeowners insurance yeah you qualify to buy a car you finance the car you can't roll up the lot you take the keys without proof of insurance I just had a kid seven months ago. You just had a kid, right? Yep. We couldn't leave the hospital without proof of? Insurance. Nope. Car, oh. car seat. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know why I said insurance? Because you did it. Because I did it. Yeah, you did it. I, I, I mean, legend was born, and we like, yeah. we have to insure him. That, that's, what, that's what smart people do. That's what well-minded yeah. people do. But the, the law says the, the nurse cannot put you in that car. Until there's a car seat. Until there's a proper IDOT approved car seat in that car. Not because you have health insurance or life insurance or college insurance. So we focus, what I'm, what I'm <laughs> getting is we focus, sometimes we focus on the wrong things. And, and the banks t- are telling you something with that. Mm-hmm. They value more real estate. They value more cars than they, 
people are valuing themselves. Now, now, and let me tell you why we got insurance on Legend. Because the idea is we want him to outlive us. But the first thing I thought about is it's going to be expensive. And I did it so we could actually have money later. Yeah. Because his insurance policy has a cash balance. So as we're putting in, the cash balance grows. Yeah. And I actually did the math. And we're going to be a little short for college. So I, I'm actually in conversation to be like, Let's get more insurance. Why am I getting more insurance? So we have more cash available right. when he goes to college. Bam. Well, and then he can choose. Correct. He's got options. Yeah. That's, exa- that's exactly why you, you get to a financial position mm-hmm. to open doors and create options in your life. It's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show because I think when we think about money, when we think about money, I think a lot of times we think linear, right? Mm-hmm. It's I need to make more money. Mm-hmm. And it's not what am I doing with the money I have? And early on, even when you weren't making much money, it was what you were doing with the money that you had right. that has helped you create this financial success. Now, part of it is the anchors you drop, the commitments, right? I heard that. Yep. The commitment you have to, to fitness and health, yep. the commitment you have to family. So I'm curious, in business, what commitment do you have that has helped you create a multi-million dollar business? Commit that I'm always going to be setting an example. For example, if there's somebody going to be at the office that's going to be working hard, I want to set an example of hard work. I mean, uh, you know, Sheena, Sheena had a baby the next couple of weeks. There's no FMLA to entrepreneurs. No, it's not. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. But we need to set an example. Like the, that next week after giving birth, she's back in the office. Now, uh, there's something interesting because I think some people would think, well, that's too much. I think the important piece to put in is how do you feel about what you do? Uh, in terms of a life and business? Yeah, how, how do you feel about I it? I love what I do. Ah! I do. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Say, say it again. I love what I do. I love oh, what we do. So, right? so when I love what I do, then integration like this, like showing up in the office yeah. a week after birth is not hard. I love my career. I love my business. I love my wife. Mm. I, love every, I love my life. So I'm going to make time for it. For you, it's a combination of work ethic, but it, you're also doing something you're passionate about. Yeah. What would you say your purpose is? My purpose is to make a difference. I just want to make a difference. That your life is better because somehow, some way, I was involved in it. Ah, I love that. Yeah. So, like, that. so in, when I hear it, it's impact. Yeah. Because I was involved in your life, your life is better. You're living a better life. Mm-hmm. Very similar purposes, brother. <laughs> I love it, man. That's why you're not going to have a conversation like this and not feel like an hour or two. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah, 30, yeah. It's like feel like this line. Yeah. 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 I mean, well, similar anchors, similar commitments. Yeah. I mean, and that's what that's what you your listeners need to find, man. Mm-hmm. You need to find those guys. There's people that you that you're around that if you, you don't feel like you're stepping up your game with, then that's the wrong that's the wrong crowd to be a part of. Like the the crowd of people I'm with, man, I'm always feeling like I need a I need to level up always. Yeah, I'm, I'm never I'm comfortable leveling up around them. If, that, if there's a layer of comfort, that's that's it. I'm Got comfortable it. leveling leveling up with you around me. So let me ask you this. Why should someone play on your team? And, and here's the reason I'm asking. Because you're, you're growing a business. Yeah. I think it's clear that insurance makes money. Sure. That was a phenomenal example. I fell right into it, too. I'm like, <laughs> Willis Tower? <laughs> what, 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 what other, what's the other tallest building? John Hancock? What kind of, what kind of companies are they? Insurance? AM? Yeah. Prudential, right? But all these tall buildings are in, insurance companies. Yeah. There's money in insurance. Mm-hmm. Full disclosure, because there's money in insurance, when Matt and I first met, one of the things you said is, man, you should get in life insurance. <laughs> get a license. And I'm like, yeah. bro, that's not what I do. I was, right. I'm, I'm like, I transform people's lives, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Now, here's the thing about evolution. As I'm doing this work, I'm realizing that a huge part of people's lives, what happened is my wife and I, uh, a good friend of ours passed away hmm. and admired him. I mean, he was a behemoth in terms of the work that he did. He didn't have insurance. So here he is. He's working at a high level. He's built this brand. And then in death, it crumbled. And I realized that, wait a second, there's an element to finance and insurance that not only means living the best life while we're here, but securing your legacy when you're gone. And because of that, I decided to get my life. I'm like, I'm going to help as many people as possible. Now, my work is coaching, but the license is the incentive to actually do the work and have the conversation like this. Yeah. And I trust my mom. So that's where the partnership is. Yeah. But I just want to be clear that part of this is creating incentives for me financially to help more people. There is always service guarantees success. So when I'm telling you all to call the office, that's what's in it for me. And I, and, and, and I want to be clear about that. So give me give us up on my phone call. Three, one, two, eight, nine, nine, six, two, four, five. So my mom can work with you. And my incentive to follow up is I get a piece of the pie. But not just that. I also get to help you move your life to the next level. And if this is a business you want to be in then when you make that phone call you let us know i'll connect you to my mom so she can help you understand how to grow in this business because this is a way for people to make money and nobody's talking about it yeah. nobody understands the importance of insurance until they have to pop up a gofundme account on social media it breaks my heart and here's the thing the people that follow me if something happened to me and 
A week later, you hear my wife on the airwaves ask, you know, like, yeah. we, we want to bury, we want to give him a proper burial. Like, that's that's a piece of my legacy that's broken. That should not be. Especially if I'm talking about living the best life and my, and my wife in my absence can't. Like, it's important for me. I don't know if it's corny or not, but I want my great, great, great grandkids to know great, great, great grandpa That's legacy. Matt. That's legacy. That's legacy. I can't even go back that far. And one of the beauties about the world that we live in now is that the information's here. Yeah. And so my what, I, what I'm beseeching the audience to do is what I hear a lot of times is I don't trust financial people. I, I, don't, I don't believe what they say. And what I'm saying is if you listen to me week after week after week and you trust me, have a conversation with my mom, who many of you have heard, and you trust. Have a conversation with her about your finances, about what's going on in your household and how you can solidify your financial legacy. And if this sounds like a business you want to be in, let's have a, let's have a conversation with her about that as well so you can build and take care of your family because ultimately the commitment is fitness health family and finances yeah, and growth 100 percent. i'm glad you brought that up because you came to our convention last year when kevin hart was there that's right and so he loves what we do um uh, he cool. said it on the stage he's like this stage. is amazing yeah, this is a company but i think anybody who's looking to grow anybody who cares about their money they get it right off the top i mean you guys had kobe bryant this year Yep, Kobe Bryant. And Kobe loves what we do. He's like, I only do business with people that are just crazy competitors. Well, how can you tell, Kobe? He goes, I can smell it on him. I smell it on you guys. Beautiful. Right? President Bush was there. Yeah. You know, it was a, he was a, you never thought he had a personality. He had one heck of a personality. Oh, man, you know, person. you know President Bush. He's George <laughs> George Bush. George Bush had a, you might, even if you don't like his politics, you yeah. got to, you know the guy's a partier. Yeah, you know, you can get down. <laughs> okay, GW. so, yeah. All right, man. Hey, thank you guys for listening. Matt, appreciate man. you, brother. Honor, brother. Yeah. Thank you for being in the studio this morning. Again, how can people follow you and find you? Find me at MoneySmartGuy.com, MoneySmartGuy on Instagram, MoneySmartGuy on YouTube, MoneySmartGuy on LinkedIn, Twitter, you name it, MoneySmartGuy. It be a pleasure to connect with you. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this conversation with a little now this morning. Appreciate you guys tuning in and following. All right. My name is Linnell Harris, your very own life coach and the host of Inspirational Perspective. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, stay inspired. It's a lifestyle choice.